surrendering all. Find me here, Lord, as you draw me near, desperate for you, desperate for you. I surrender. Welcome to our service on this, the Sunday before Lent begins. O tender light of the Holy and Heavenly Trinity, open our eyes and we shall see your glory. Open our minds and we shall know your ways. Open our lives and we shall show your presence. Open our lips, and we shall tell your praise.
Light up for us your presence. Almighty God, Creator, greyness has enveloped our world. As we lift our hearts to you, may your glory make things clear. Almighty God, Creator, you seem absent from your world. Light up for us your presence in all we meet and touch. Almighty God, Creator, veiled by cloud and storm, shine through our trivial tasks and make them signals of your love. Make us aware, dear Lord, of the eye that beholds us, the hand that holds us, the heart that loves us, the presence that transforms us. Jesus, you took your friends to be alongside you. Be close to us today. Father, you strengthened your son for his coming trial. Strengthen us today. Spirit, your glory transfigured them like a cloud. Transfigure us today. Saviour, you led the disciples down to serve a suffering world. Have mercy on our suffering world. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives. Make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There are two readings for today. The first is taken from 2 Kings chapter 2. And um, if you want to read it for yourself, it is the story of Elijah and Elisha as Elijah ascends to heaven. And Elisha will not be put off each, each time Elijah says to him now, you know, I'm going on and you can stay here. And he says, no, no, just take me with you. So if you want to read 2 Kings chapter 2, and I'll be referring to that in the sermon as well. Um, but the reading, the gospel reading for today is the, transfigura is the transfiguration from Mark chapter 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared, there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. <laughs> he didn't know what to say, for they were terrified. And then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine Heir of salvation, purchase of God Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood This is my story, this is my song Praising my Saviour all the day long This is my story this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, vision. 
visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. My Savior, I'm happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above Filled with His goodness, lost in His love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. So here I am with um, my hat and my walking stick ready to go on my walk. And as an introduction for this Sunday's message, I asked the question, are the shoes too big to fill? Have you ever been in a position where you're taking over from someone else who's stepped down from a role and a role that they've attended to in a magnificent way and you're now taking over? I remember the moment when I realised I was the matriarchy in our family as both my parents had died and how could I fill the shoes of my mother and all the mothers that had gone before. You know there are some people who inspire us to step into bigger shoes encouraging us to reach for a goal or see the potential in us that we sometimes can't see for ourselves and shoes play a part in other metaphors concerning empathy, walking a mile in the shoes of another before judging their actions. See how they live and breathe and consider what it might, what we might do in their place. Or maybe you've heard the metaphor to walk in the footsteps of another, just simply learning from them and following their way of life. As we approach the beginning of Lent, I want to provide an opportunity to consider the journey that we may take. Are we walking in the footsteps of another or stepping into their shoes? It is one thing to be a disciple, to learn and to follow in the way of life of another, but it is also another thing to be an apostle. The emphasis on the word apostle is to be sent out. The two readings that we have before us today speak of both. As disciples, we walk in the footsteps of Christ, learning every step of the way. But as apostles, we step into the shoes of those who have gone before us and receive our commission. Our two readings today introduce us to what it means to be a disciple. Elijah is described at the beginning of the second book of Kings as a hairy man with a leather belt around his waist. Does this sound familiar? When first reading the account of Elijah and Elisha, it might appear that Elisha had something of an ego to contend with as he asked to inherit a double share of Elijah's spirit. 
and yet that couldn't be further from the truth. To inherit a double share or a double portion was to ask if he might be considered like a firstborn son, a son who receives unlimited anointing, which makes his cry all the more poignant as he cries out, Father, Father, as Elijah is taken from him before his very eyes. Elisha had walked in the way of Elijah, learning from him every step of the way, and he was asking, may I be worthy to step into your shoes, to take the place at the head of the house of Israel, to be their prophet and their priest. If you continue to read the second book of Kings, you'll find that unlimited anointing was certainly upon him. Even if he was a bit harsh towards a few boys calling him Baldy. I'll let you find that one. As we turn to the New Testament, we see Elijah again, along with Moses, tending to Jesus at the Transfiguration. Jesus takes with him his disciples, Peter, who was first introduced to us as Simon. So he takes with him Simon Peter and James and John. They've been with him since the beginning of his ministry and Mark's account has them as being amongst the first disciples called by Jesus. He called them and they followed. Mark, to whom the authorship of this gospel is given, is believed to have been with Peter in his later years of imprisonment, writing his memoirs, his first-hand account, his eyewitness testimony of what he saw and learnt and understood in the brief three years of Jesus' ministry. And Mark documented the discipleship journey of Peter. He also will have heard of his apostolic journeys, the life he lived having been sent out as an apostle. As an apostle. And when preparing this service, I had to ask myself, whose shoes are the disciples stepping into? Is it too much of an assumption to suggest that they are stepping into the shoes of Jesus? As Methodists, we are renowned for singing our faith. The hymns that make up our hymn book declare our beliefs. And one of those hymns speaks of serving others. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. I'm going to dare to suggest that we are called to step into the shoes of Christ. And my goodness me, they are shoes too big to fill. But let us not forget that as we journey to Easter, we hold the promise of the Spirit already among us after Pentecost. As disciples, Jesus has called us to follow in his footsteps, learning from him every step of the way and as apostles we are sent out to share the good news and teaching that we have received. The shorter end of Mark's Gospel reads, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. But as we are sent, let us also listen, walking a mile in the shoes of others, so to speak, and listen for the prompting of God's Spirit, for without it, the journey will fail or go off in the wrong direction. One thing is for sure, we journey together, holding steady those who might stumble, sometimes adjusting our pace for those who need to catch up and always welcoming those we meet along the way. May you journey well this Lent, and may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you every step of the way. Amen.
Your glory. 